Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Brian, and this is Frank, and we're at Pull Apart Used Auto Parts, and we're gonna save this 86 Cutlass from the Crusher, and we're gonna be using parts from this Monte Carlo to do so. Welcome to Classic G-Body Garage. So if you've been watching Classic G-Body Garage over the past couple years, you know that I've done work with Pull Apart for quite a while, namely the Scrap National build. Did a complete series on that car when that car was pulled aside when it came through the doors at Pull Apart. So that's the same story with both of these cars here. We have an 86 Cutlass and I believe this is an 87 Monte Carlo. So the object of this video here is to find out if we can get this car running and driving once again. And the way Pull Apart works is when their cars come through the door, they will pull certain ones aside if they feel that they have potential to live another life. And they have a full used car program. And this car qualified for that. But since we have a long time relationship, they gave me a call just like they did when the Grand National came through the door and asked if I wanted to do something with this car. So we traveled down here to Louisville, Kentucky at their location. We're gonna do some work on this 86 Cutlass. The parts here from this Monte Carlo. We'll see if we can get this car running and driving once again and save it from the crusher. Now like Brian said, we're gonna be using parts from this Monte Carlo so that we can get the Cutlass running. Now, if you didn't know, a lot of parts do interchange between different makes and models. Now, pullapart.com has a parts interchange service that you can check and see which parts will work on your car um, from other vehicles as well. Yeah, exactly. If you go into their yard and you find your car and the part isn't there, you can go on that interchange service and find out what other vehicles use that exact part and then go find it in the yard. So what we're gonna do is I'll grab the camera, we'll do a quick walk around around this uh, Cutlass, check out its true condition, find out if it really is savable. You know, at first glance, it's really in pretty decent shape and that's why I pull apart, set it aside. I don't see any major uh, body damage or anything. Let's take a quick walk around it. Check out these, these dual exhaust. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not so sure about those. <laughs> it's not too bad, I mean. So the trunk lock is popped, but I do have a screwdriver. Let's take a look. All right, let's see. Oh! It's a mess. It is a mess. It's got a lot of stuff going on it in does. here. It's got Couple socks, tools, some tools. Got some free tools. Amplifier. Looks like someone was living out of here. Maybe people from Pull Apart. <laughs> Works here. Got a hard hat. Neon vest. It has the, the jacket in steel. Wow. Got parts of the car in here. Emblems. There's a bunch of stuff in here. Carbon choke cleaner, we might need this. Might end up using that later, yeah. Radio stuff, jack. Is this a set of spark plugs? Oh, wow, is that, a, is that a brand new box of spark plugs? I don't know, maybe they're for this car. We have to look them up. All right, so we got parts. Yeah, brand new container Eclipse. <laughs> Allen key, Allen uh, powder pins, clips, C clips, brand new radiator cap. Someone was trying to get into this car. Check this out. Some big dent here. 
all these pry marks here like someone was trying to pry the car open. The interior isn't too bad. Check it out on that side frame. Headliner's actually not falling. Well, a little bit it is back there, but it's not too bad. Dashboard's wasted. It looks to be complete as well. Looks like everything is here. Except something that I see is missing. There's no key. Want to pop the hood and check it out? Yeah, pop the hood. Bowls 307. It is dirty under here. It's very dirty. Cobwebs. No. Looks, what do you think? It looks to be mostly original besides that fuel setup we have going on over there. Yeah, so this has someone, someone stuck a fuel pressure regulator on this thing. And also, this is an electric fuel pump, which is incorrect. So I'm guessing that the original fuel pump probably let go. And actually looking at the uh, fuel pump, the fuel line is off of it. All the fuel lines are off of it, except for the return line. But it looks like it's got a brand new, brand new hose, brand new hose on it. Brand new hose. Is that a new radiator? It definitely looks replaced. It's got a brand new radiator on it. Yeah, looks like it's got a new radiator, old cap. Still has the sticker intact. And it looks like it's got a pretty new uh, water pump on it too. Looks like all this stuff's been recently messed with. Let's take a look inside of here. Look at that. This car's had a ton of work done to it. Brand new air cleaner. It's carb free. Carburetor's free. The car almost looks pretty clean. Almost looks like the carburetor was pulled off of a junkyard car. It's got numbers on it, but clean in there. I mean, overall, the body is in nice shape. It doesn't have any major body damage other than this car has had all sorts of different colors. Look at it. The, tr the trunk lip was black. The front bumper is silver. The inside of the fenders are black. The front part of the body is silver. So if, it was sil if it's silver right here, that means this car was originally silver and someone put a different trunk lid on it. Different hood. This car's been pieced together. Looks like some black, yeah. black fenders, silver here, black doors. This car's got all sorts of stuff going on with it. But hey, it's worth saving. It's complete. It's not rusted out. It doesn't have any major body damage to it. Everything's complete under the hood. The interior's pretty decent. All right, so we went through both of these cars, and we are going to grab some parts off this mining crawler. We are going to grab the carburetor because it looks like it's freshly rebuilt grab a few things under the hood and then we're also going to grab the wheels and tires off this car and since we can't get a jack in here and get those off we're going to have him uh, grab the forklift pick it up bring it over there and take the tires off
right, so we're back at Carl's place. We have everything that we need. We got it from pull apart. We're all checked out and good to go. So the next step that we got to do is find out if we can get this car running. And what we got to do is first off, you see this motor's locked up. That's first and foremost, because if the motor's locked up, we're kind of dead here. So we'll open this one up. And we'll see if we can manually pop the hinge. Yeah, it is. Let's, uh, I know that they drain, the, they drain all the fluids out of this car. This car actually went through their processing, which they, they popped the uh, transmission pan. So if we get to the point where the motor runs, we have a transmission pan to put on it, a gas tank. Uh, they pulled the drain plug and the radiator uh, as well. So hopefully the radiator's fine. Drain plug, I think, is back in it. So let's grab a hold. I'm gonna grab a hold of the motor. And try to, oh, actually, right. that was easy. Oh, nice. All right, so that motor turns over super, super easy, like almost too easy. Let's hope it's not blown up because it turns over so easy right now. Yeah, all right, it's getting tighter. Maybe we got some this is way plugs. too easy. Yeah. Maybe we got some spark plugs. Huh? Way too easy. All the spark plugs are in it. They are. Let's just hope the motor's not blowing in this thing. So the first thing we'll do is, uh, since we know the motor's not locked up, we'll throw a battery in it. We don't have a key. Uh, we don't have a key, so, uh, and I don't have my jump jumper for the starter, unfortunately, I forgot that. Uh, so we do have a steering column that we gotta put in it so we can get a key, get some power to it, and crank over the motor. We'll find out if the motor's any good because it turns over way too easy, that I think. Yeah. And uh, we'll see if this thing will crank over. All right, we'll get a battery in this thing. We'll see what kind of power we got first off. Hopefully we won't start any fires. It might have power right now, Frank. Because right, hit the headlights. Yeah. We got power. Normally bust it. Just want to make sure we don't have any fires. I don't see anything smoking right now. Man, I really wish we had a key right now. Pretty pieced together. So the column's got to be replaced anyways because we can't even steer the car even if we had a way to jump it yeah we can't yeah. even steer the car because the steering column's locked so get the tools and start getting that column out of there and oh, we are out all right so frank has the steering column out and there's a whole lot of aftermarket stuff going on in here with relays and wiring and and there's a switch, there's a toggle switch right here, which I don't know what that's for. There's a fuse. It feels like there's something up underneath here. So there's the Viper system. So we gotta find out if this system is tied into the ignition switch at all. Because even if we did have a key for the column, <coughs> We might not be able to get this thing fired up just because this alarm might be preventing us from from doing anything. So we're gonna get rid of all this stuff so we know that we won't have any uh, ignition issues. Right here. Here's the purple wire you wanna tie into. This is what kills the starter. They have it spliced into this, uh, into this uh, alarm system, which we gotta get rid of. All right, so we got the steering column all in place. We're gonna hook the battery back up and hopefully we have power. If we have power, go into everything. We'll see if the motor will bump over with the key. This is how we have a key in this column. So I'm gonna hook this thing up. Why don't you step inside, Frank, and see sure. if we got, let me get this thing hooked up and see if we have some sort of power. And if we don't, I'll figure that out. Turn the headlights on. All right, so we got power, so turn it back off. Click the key forward. Something click? Yep. Bump the key. All right. <laughs> nice. All right, well, that's nice. cool, that's nice. cool. Nice. Got, all right, click it back off. Nothing came on the dashboard though. Like no lights or buzzer or anything came on. 
you know? All right, bump it once more. All right, cool. So we don't want to crank it any further than that because I know that pull apart drain the oil out of it. So we just wanted to make sure that the motor cranked over, it's not seized up. Even though I was moving it by hand very easily, the motor seems to be okay. So click the key off, uh, disconnect the battery. We'll do that, we'll put oil in it, change the filter, and uh, dump some gas down the carb and see if it'll kick over. Pretty much everything ready to go. Uh, we know that the motor cranks over since the column is in it. That's good to go. Uh, change the oil on it because, as mentioned, pull apart does drain the oil out of these things. So I grabbed the old filter off of it, put fresh oil in it, 15W40. We got the, uh, the fire starter right here. So what we're gonna do right now? Let's. Why don't you crank it over? Uh, you know, hold up. Hook up the battery first. We'll get this thing cranked over. Get that new oil circulated in it before we want to even attempt to fire it up. And then we'll put a little bit of gas down the carburetor. I'm not going to fill up the float bowl just yet because I only want it to see if it'll kick over. And if it does, then we'll put, we have one more step to go is, uh, is we need to get the transmission fluid back in it, but the pan has a hole in it. So as soon as we know the motor fires up or will fire over, then we'll do the transmission pan because we don't want to do any unnecessary work if there's something wrong with the motor or anything else further wrong. So why don't you crank it over, Frank? You ready? Yeah, just let it go for a few, uh, I don't know, 10 seconds. All right. Wow, that sounds pretty good. Sounds yeah, all right. Sounds yeah, all right. yeah, I'm with Frank. Yeah, it sounds all right. All right, so here we go. Dump a little bit of gas down here. See if it'll kick over. I'll let you know, Frank, when to uh okay. okay. Alright, here we go. They fired it. Let me know when you're ready. You got a fire extinguisher, Carl? You know what? Let me go grab it. <laughs> <laughs> All you gotta do is pull pull the pull the pin and roll. But we don't gotta pull it now. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, I don't let it. Well you just you just stand there and be handy with that and <laughs> No, I knew that. All right, go ahead. Let's see if this is, it's in part. We're good. Yep. Ready to roll? Bump it. Yep. See what happens. Now the starter's gonna act up. All right, let's try it again. I hope we don't have to put a starter on this thing. Yeah. It's part of the starter. Yeah, again. Nothing. Now the stars will start acting up. Oh, oh, woo. Woo. Got the magic touch. Whee. All right, well we know it'll fire. And that's all we needed. So now what we'll do next is now we know that it runs. And I hope we don't have to put a starter in it. Uh, let's try and change up the transmission pan. Yep, let's go. point that we uh, we changed out the transmission pan we added four quarts of fluid in it so we're all good there we know it fires over it ran for a second so now what we're gonna do 
I'm gonna fill up the float bowl, drop a little bit of gas down the carburetor, and we'll let it run here for a little, you know, for a couple more seconds. We still have some more issues with the car, uh, mainly a fuel supply issue because the fuel pump is uh, doesn't work. It's not even hooked up, and it had that electric fuel pump on it. But we took all that wiring out of here to clean things up. So we just want to make sure that the motor runs, uh, doesn't have any internal noises. Uh, the transmission, we're not gonna be able to test that just yet. But this is just gonna let it run a little bit longer and then we'll get to the fuel pump. We gotta get to the gas tank as well because that had a hole punched in it, uh, just like everything else did. So let me fill this up and I'll have Frank hit the key. Awesome. All right, Frank, go ahead and bump the key and see what happens. Let's do it. So, hey, I'm gonna add a little bit more and some here to run a little bit longer. All right, cool. All right, that's all we need. Dude, that thing sounds yeah. great. It does. That's all we need. Right. After we finally got the cutlass running, we removed the old fuel pump and flat ran out of time as it was getting late. So we wrapped things up, pushed the car back onto the trailer, and headed back to Classy G-Body Garage in snowy Northern Ohio. In the next video, Frank and I dive back in where we left off by finishing the fuel pump installation, swap out the gas tank, and finally pull the cutlass out of the garage under its own power. Will it leave us stranded on its maiden voyage? Cruising pretty good. About 50, 60 miles an hour, no problem. Subscribe and stay tuned for part two. As always, thanks for watching and make sure you keep those G bodies rolling.